podcast, this podcast has to do with IMFs. And IMFs simply stand for Intermolecular Forces. And um, sometimes I will call them IMFAs. Um, but either way, it's Intermolecular Forces. And I like adding the A of attraction. All right, so enter um, means between. So an interstate highway goes between two states. So if we hop on um, I-35 and go north, we're going to go through Missouri and Iowa and on up into Illinois. So enter means between molecules. So um, for instance, um, if we had some water molecules, so water has a bent shape, kind of like this. Um, we would have another water molecule kind of here. And essentially what this shows is there's an attraction um, between this water molecule and this water molecule. And um, we might show it with, uh, I'll just use different ink real quick, um, but we might show it um, these big dashes mean bonds, or we might just show it with like a small dash line. So this right here is representing an attraction between molecules. Okay? So intermolecular forces, there's three types, and I'm just going to go over the three types. So the first type is simply known as London Dispersion Forces. Um, London was a guy's last name, so it has nothing to do with the city in Great Britain, but London Dispersion Forces. And a couple of things you need to know about London Forces is all molecules have London Dispersions because London Dispersions simply have to do with where electrons are in a specific element. So, um, if we talked about um, helium, so helium has two electrons, but we never find helium by itself. If we're talking about the element helium, we might have a whole gas, a whole container filled with millions and millions, moles and moles and moles of helium atoms, okay? So helium doesn't exist on its own. We might have another helium right here. So because we can freeze helium and turn it into a liquid and eventually get into, into a solid, there must be attractions between those particles so we can go from a gas to a liquid. Because simply a liquid, there's more attractions between molecules in a liquid than there are between mo molecules in a gas. In a solid, there's even stronger attractions than those attractions in a liquid. All right. So London dispersion forces simply say we have two electrons that are around our helium. And let's say for one, and these are moving, you know, all around our proton, all around our nucleus, and all directions, just randomly going. Well, let's say for one split moment, both of our electrons happen to be on this side, the right side of our helium. So we could say that this side has a temporary negative charge, and this side over here has a positive charge. Well, if there was another helium atom right close to this first helium atom, what would happen is this negative charge would force these electrons to the, to the right side of this helium, so it would become negative, and this side would become positive, and very briefly, we would have an attraction, an intermolecular force between our two heliums, okay? Um, the more electrons you have, the stronger London dispersion forces are. So if we had two molecules, let's say CH4, this is methane, and it's a gas, um, and we had C2H6, this is ethane, which is a gas, and we have C3H8, this is propane, which is a gas that you know cooks our hamburgers, but then our next one, if we went up to C4H10, this is butane, and it's a liquid. And if you keep on adding carbons and more hydrogens, um, another thing we might be familiar with is C8H18, this is octane. It's um, when you pump your gas, you have octane. So each of these, we're adding more and more and more and more electrons. What happens is, the more electrons we have, the stronger the dispersion forces is, so the more likely something is to be a liquid at room temperature. If there's few forces, it's going to be a gas, more forces, liquid, and a lot of forces, a lot of attractions, it'll be a solid. So that's the London dispersion. Our second type is known as dipole-dipole. All right, and dipole-dipole, we talked about dipoles. Um, they're little arrows that show where electrons are going. So these happen in polar molecules. So we learned what polar molecules are in a previous podcast or in class. And it's simply 
when we have an asymmetrical um, electron arrangement around our central atom. We have a polar molecule. So, for example, we might have um, C O H H. All right, so if we look at dipoles here, we would find that our H's are kind of sending electrons towards carbon. So we're going to have two dipoles this way. And then O is more electronegative than carbon, so we have another dipole this way. And overall, all of our dipoles add up to saying that this O is partially negative, and my H's are partially positive. So if we had another one of these molecules, let's say another um, C double bond O, H, H. All right, the same would be true of this molecule, where our H's are partially positive, and our O is partially negative. So what's going to happen is this O is going to be attracted to this H over here, okay? Because negative is attracted to positive. Again, this is an attraction between molecules. So it's not a bond, it's an attraction between molecules. And um, we would just say that this is an attraction that's stronger than London dispersion forces. So London dispersion forces are our weakest. And then as we go down, we're going to get to strong. And dipole dipole is kind of right in the middle. The dipole dipole is quite a bit stronger than London. Okay, our last one is known as hydrogen bonding. And it's silly that it's called that because it's not bonding at all, but it is called hydrogen bonding. And hydrogen bonding is simply really, really strong dipole dipole attractions. All right? So it's really a super polar molecule. So it's anytime an H is bonded to our three most electronegative elements, which are N, O, or F. So nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. If H is bonded to these, it's attracted to an a N, O, or F on another molecule. So for example, if we had something like um, NH3, so this is ammonia, and it kind of looks like this. We have three H's around. It's a trigonal pyramidal shape. All right, but if we look at dipoles again, we're going to find that everybody is pointing towards this nitrogen. So it's really negative, and all of my H's are positive. And all of my H's are positive. All right, so if we had another NH molecule, now let's draw that real quick. NH3, kind of like this. Again, my inside is really negative, and my H side is pretty positive. And we have an attraction between this N and this H. But because N is so electronegative, it really kind of really, really attracts electrons very heavily to itself. That pole, or that that um, dipole is much stronger between the N and the H on the other molecule. So again, hydrogen bonding is just a really, really, really strong dipole, uh, but it's so strong it has its own name. It's not really bonding. It's still an intermolecular force. So intermolecular forces are not bonds. They're simply forces of attraction between molecules.